Hey there, Film Buds. Welcome back to the Film Buds podcast. I'm your host, Paul. And I'm Lauren. And we are joined by the one, the only, the friend of the show, Nick Delgadillo. ka <laughs> <laughs> Hit it better than Owen Wilson. Uh, <laughs> That's right. That's not, right. Not possible. Not possible. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Don't undersell yourself. Uh, <laughs> Look, so, he's he has he's said it a lot more times than I have. He's got it down pat. That's true. Mm-hmm, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Nick is uh, here to join us on our special Halloween episode. And you know, last year we did a a whole big slasher extravaganza, which you joined us for as well. Um, oh, yeah. and we we enjoyed it so much that we said, "Let's bring it on back." That's great. And so, buckle up, you're in store for the return of the slasher extravaganza. Uh, Listener, beware, you're in for a scare. That's right. I love it. (laughs) Uh, No, we had a we had a whole blast last time. You know, we did we did all the big ones. Halloween, uh, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Candyman, Scream, Candyman. Um, we covered them all. And then we decided, let's go and do some of the other ones this time around. And so, uh, for today's episode, where we're doing a little bit of a different thing, uh, we're going with the Texas Chainsaw, one of the other granddaddies, one of the other Mac daddies alongside Halloween. Um, but definitely a different animal. Uh, yeah. as far as franchises go. And then we're also doing Child's Play. You know, we're getting into sort of the B tier of of uh, the the known slasher icons because people know Chucky, but like I'm not sure how many people have really seen a Chucky movie. You know, start to finish. Um, it's one of those. Um, this was uh, I watched Hellraiser for the first time a couple weeks ago to get ready for the new one, and th- that's the same thing for me. It's like, of course, I know what Hellraiser is, and I've seen Pinhead, just like everyone knows who Chucky is. You know, but yeah. you may not have ever seen any of the movies i've seen either. the box yeah <laughs> right i've, yeah, seen, I know, I've seen i clips. know the stuff <laughs> seen clips i've seen toys i've seen costume yeah you know i've seen the references i saw cabin in the woods uh and so there's a hellraiser reference in that one that's true yeah exactly uh exactly. and so uh yeah you know uh child's play was definitely one of those for me so we're doing texas chainsaw we're doing child's play uh and then we decided that we would also do as a a little additional thing sort of a sci-fi slasher triad of uh alien predator and terminator the first of each of those of franchises respectively uh which definitely tread into uh the the sort of line of slashers um before we get into all the film goodies nick how you doing what have you been up to i'm great i um came back from a i just got back from a children's like trunk or treat for oh Halloween. okay so that was fun let me tell you kids today like their costumes uh they just kick the shit out of our costumes really early 2000s 90s <laughs> <laughs> These these kids have cool costumes now, man. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I remember having some cool costumes as a kid. I mean, we did we did for sure, but like I don't know. Now they have like the nice, the cool like blow up stuff. I don't know how else. That's true. Like, that's true. Like, there's like tons of dinosaurs and a couple of dragons, but like this, like a full big old costume. Where like you know the kind where like the kid looks out like the chest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, and you just Whatever. have it's, you know some. It's, it's not important. What's more important is that they were like five Naruto costumes, which rock. Yeah. <laughs> were, were they all Naruto, or were they just characters from the franchise? No, th- there were. Uh, there was one Naruto, and he was great. Um, there was two, just like they just had the, like a Katsuki robes. They were okay. And they might have been a specific character, but I couldn't tell. Uh, one kid was Toby, <laughs> okay. which I was hyped for. That's my boy. 
he he had he had the mask whole deal um but the best one this dude uh this kid was hidan um so he had like the full-on like skull like face paint and everything along with the, okay. the katsuki robes uh he looked great it was cool <laughs> good for them good for them it sounds like some of them might have been there for like together you know naruto sounds like he might have just like not gotten the memo naruto was there naruto was there teamed up with like a kid who was like a generic like kind of like ninja costume okay and okay and a kid who a kid who was like a like a like a grim reaper kind of deal like it was like a hood it was like a ripped up like a cloak with a hood and everything okay. and it was it was one of the face things where like it's completely black you can't see the kid's face mm-hmm. you know, so i'm like this is a powerful trio right here. <laughs> People better watch out. Chaos. You don't, you don't want to mess with. You don't want to mess with them. Uh, this actually reminds me of one Halloween. Um, long ago, I went as uh, Yoda for Halloween. Good. This was like right after Attack of the Clones, I think. And Word. I decided that I want to go as as Yoda, and so I got a mask. My mom actually made me like the the costume. Um, she made me like a robe. We had like a stick and everything. <laughs> and got the ears. Um, oh no it was a full mask like it was an entire oh the ears were a part of the mask yeah 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 yeah. nice uh and so i went with a friend of mine uh and he decided he was a real nerd and he decided to go as radagast the brown and this is before the hobbit movies you know (laughs) were out and so radagast the brown oh lord of the rings like yeah fucking deep cuts you know you probably don't know you probably never (laughs) (laughs) that's right (laughs) um and so he and i went out trick-or-treating so he's there as radagast the brown but he didn't like put on a beard or like do anything else he was just there in this outfit you know as like a yeah, like a 12 year old or whatever the hell at the time uh and then i'm there as yoda and so every house we went to every single house oh yoda and obi-wan yeah they thought he was like, right. gonna, they thought he uh-huh. they thought he was another jedi uh huh. Right. Every That's single right. time, and every Poor single kid. time he had to go. No, I'm Radagast the Brown. <laughs> you ruined that that whole Halloween. He worked so hard, and everybody knew who Yoda was. So mm-hmm. that was Poor all. Poor kid. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was all they needed. <laughs> those are sad. Everybody's got like a sad <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Shot that kid right in the foot. <laughs> worked hard. Sucks. I was watching. <laughs> I was watching Daniel Tiger, Daniel Tiger's uh-huh. Neighborhood with with my childs this morning, and it was a Halloween episode. And this uh, poor O oh, the owl, he's dressed as a, a traffic light, but he falls and like it breaks his costume. Mm. Um, oh, no. He's like he's like I'm nothing now. He's like I don't want to be anything <laughs> else. He's like. They go to like another house and they give him like candy. Actually, they don't give him candy. They give him stickers. Lame. The so Daniel Tiger's neighborhood is lame. On it's not Halloween. It's dress up day in the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. But I'd be like, at least give me candy. <laughs> exactly. Um. Anyway, that's really not important. The point was that I understand because I watched Daniel Tiger's, and my son understands because he watched it. Daniel that's right. Tiger today. Sometimes Halloween doesn't go how you how you planned. He dressed up as a cat, by the way, because he's just insane about cats. Oh, okay. so he Good had a, he had the ears, you know. He had a uh, face paint. Was he like a calico? Stuffy. You know, was he a, he a, a black cat? He's a a white cat. I don't know. Look, I'm terrible with cat breeds. I got no clue. He is. Hey, I'll take cat. white. He has a he cat a from cat. a. He's a cat from Gabby's Dollhouse the TV okay. show. Uh, that's about it has a lot of cats in it because it's not about cats. Okay. It is kind of about cats. All right, I'll that. <laughs> doesn't matter. He would be a car if he could. I understand. Like, like the number one choice. Uh, he's still pumped about being a cat because he loves kitties. But uh, his number one choice would have been something cars related. But you can't like do anything with that. Like no, the like Lightning you could hang a box on him. Like the Lightning McQueen costumes and stuff. Sometimes it's just mm-hmm. like a like a race a race car, 
like driver outfit with like Lightning McQueen colors and stuff. I'm like, it's just lame. It just doesn't work. No, I get that. <laughs> the kid's not going to feel like the car. Make a transformer car. It's not, not going to be right. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to be right. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Now after Woo! after after on getting delayed note. for uh, on that note. well, before we jumped into it, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit. Uh, what for you? You know, because we're going to talk about a few different types of of slasher mode, right? Texas Chainsaw Child's Play and the sort of sci-fi slashers that we're going to talk about are all definitively definitely within the genre, but are 100%, you know, different modalities of it. So I kind of wanted to, before we got into the discussion, ask you directly, what do you consider uh, the general genre conventions that, you know, not 100% of them have to be there, but generally make up what you consider a slasher? that allow for us to go on such a spectrum for me like a slasher uh is pretty much a movie that doesn't where it's either like a a single person or entity or like it could be maybe it's a, a duo or whatever and like the structure of the movie is basically like cast of characters gets taken out like one by one by said entity or whatever it may be um i don't know that's pretty much it for me <laughs> Fair <enough. laughs> has to, and, and like has has to be like scary it can be like scary like and comedic but it has to have that like horror element to it like i really went back and forth this year with bodies 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 which is like considered horror by a lot of people and I don't know if I'd consider it horror. It's like much more of a thriller to me. Like, I don't know if it's scary. Like, it's scary in the way that a thriller is scary to me, not in the way that a horror movie is scary, if that makes sense. Sure, I guess. Um, so this was something that Lauren and I were talking about. For and, me, um, like a, a thriller, um, using Psycho as an example, right? The thrill of that movie is watching the discovery happen of who precisely is the killer. Uh, But also, I think it ultimately answers a question that we know deep in our hearts to be true from the moment that we meet Norman, which is that it's him, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's some of the thrill. We know that people have been getting killed off, and it doesn't quite, for me, hit that. It's, I think, the prototype that people are using for the mold of a slasher but ultimately it's all about the psychosis. It's about this mystery around where's the sister, where's the money, who has it. Um, whereas, you know, a slasher is all about the fear of, of victimhood at the end of the day, right? It's about being in the group of people getting picked off one by one and being mm-hmm. aware that you're probably not going to get an answer to why it's happening. The goal is to really like survive. And, and like you're saying, like, that's the story to you. Yeah, that's, I like, think, like one of the, the fundamental just, differences the, between the, a thriller no and a other, slasher. Yeah, like, there's no other, like, thing going on that, like, the story veers into, like, in a slasher. Oh, no, I think slashers or, can veer into a lot of things, but I think that that's one of the pivotal differences, is that you're you're focusing on more of an investigative sort of element, as opposed okay. to, and this thrill of the mystery. Right, as opposed to just surviving, yeah. I yeah. Think, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's sort of my breakdown on it. Mm. Yes. Uh, Laura, <laughs> any thoughts? Yes. Yes, um, indeed. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I guess, you know, I, I, I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Wonderful. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, here, I guess here. we'll go ahead and, uh, and jump on into it i guess we'll start with texas chainsaw uh so nick you uh have watched all of these so why don't you go ahead and start us off what's your your background with texas chainsaw as well as like a franchise yeah texas chainsaw matt the texas chainsaw massacre the original 1974 uh 
it was like a really pivotal movie and just like think for me <laughs> in a weird way I, I feel like there's no there's no way i haven't like talked about it like on the show even i'm sure before. it's come up um but it was one of the first like really really like hard hitting horror movies that i had seen the setting was just right for me having seen it i was up um my mom's side of the family they all like together rented a uh like a bit like a large cabin like out like on the on the mountain up in virginia somewhere um for thanksgiving and me and my older cousin uh hung out in the basement i was like 12 12 13 at the time probably i don't know um and it was like the middle of the night there like this is the like the middle of nowhere this like place looked like the shining like for real um minus the snow it wasn't it was cold but there's no snow but um and i like listened to like really like scary like metal music for the first time <laughs> and uh so yeah, play watching like scary stuff and like it was like random stuff that was on but when texas chainsaw came it was like on tv um when Texas Chainsaw came on, you know, I was like, I had, I had to watch this, you know, like it was very attention grabbing. Um, uh, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to remember, but like sp specifically, but like, it, it, it's like the standard for me, like the movie that like really just scared the absolute like living crap out of me at an age where I was old enough to like understand why it really scared me, you know, not like a, like a child. But even though I was a child, but, but you know, but not to me, it's not like a childhood scare. Like that movie still has a lot of power to me. Um, scary ass movie, good stuff. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts then from that first one on the on the franchise at large? After that, ah, uh, that's. <laughs> That's weird. It's a really weird franchise because I mean, like a lot of everything that gets a franchise, like the it seems like it's not a, a movie that can be a franchise. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um I I prefer the way that Toe Hooper does it with the first sequel, um, and the only sequel that he did, which is like he just goes crazier with it, but like instead of trying to up like the like the disturbing, you know, like the like psychological kind of aspect of the first movie. Um, he just ramps up like I, I get like that's not really silliness for lack of a better term. It does get like very silly, but like by the end, it's just like so insane that like you feel like you're about to go like crazy yourself. You're like, what is happening? Like at this point, like what what has gone on? Like what have, what am I looking at? What's going on? Um so I prefer when it just like gets really wild and swings for it. It's it's when another franchise just gets disappointed that it stops being interesting for the most part, and just everybody it just turns in, into slasher mode. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Every movie just follows that same. Here comes some teens. Oh no, there's Leatherface. He's gonna get him. He got him. <laughs> one person, one person survived. Okie dokie. Till next time. <laughs> <laughs> Until next we'll time, do, indeed. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this again in a few years. Um, and like, there's varying degrees of like success as far as like that being entertaining goes for the sequels. Um, I'd be like, again, I'm like, I wish they do something different. I don't know what the, I don't know what you do. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, but make something new. <laughs> uh, but I, I think. It, it, like a lot of them i mean i feel the same way about halloween for the most part um i guess i guess most horror franchises specifically is like you just watch that first one and that's really all like truly is all you need there's a lot of defense for for sequels like for sure but like it's, it's really like that for there's just no comparison that there's nothing there's nothing after the original that like holds up to what that first one does. 
No, I think that that's absolutely fair. So for a little bit of uh, of a framework of the films that we are talking about, which, by the way, let's talk about the titles once I'm done naming them. <laughs> the films that we are, are referencing, the films that comprise the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise are The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Leatherface. And, most recently, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, just in case and, you didn't and, get it. <laughs> and for, for the visual purposes the first the original texas chainsaw massacre is the texas chain space saw that's right saw. that's right as as opposed to everything else puts chain and saw together as one word uh, from yeah. then on mm-hmm. oh it's only the original has the sp- <laughs> separate as two words yeah that's right that's right it, it's it's the big differential uh so it's with t- that because like it, they like can't call it anything else. The only thing that's called different is Leatherface, which is the and which is the character's name. Like yeah, that. and you know you, you end up getting <laughs> two of those. You know, uh, one of them has a subtitle, but you still end up getting two Leatherface movies. You know, it's 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 baffling. Um, What's the other Leatherface movie? So there's there's Leatherface, the first one, and then there is Leatherface, the the like prequel. Oh, oh, Le- Leatherface. The Texas, the Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre three, and then yeah. Leatherface is just Leatherface. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you already went over it, even, and I can't keep it straight. Chaos. It's absolute. It's nightmare stuff. Like that's my horror. You know, my real nightmare is trying to keep track of the titles of these. Okay. Films. Well, let me let me ask you this: Did you like binge this this series? Did you binge all nine of these movies like in quick succession? We watched them like within days of or did each other. You, or did you? Sp- <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, and that it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. So oh, it's 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 really bad, like psychological damage. <laughs> uh, do you want to take it away, or do you want me to go? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter to me. I need the I need the list, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'll. Well, oh, uh, I talked about let's go from like chronological like order release sure okay so uh so i talked about the original what are what are your thoughts on the original okay um so the original texas chainsaw massacre movie so for a really long time um i had seen a one of these chainsaw massacre movies and had no idea it was it was i i ended up watching the remake and i didn't know that it was the remake i just assumed that you know i was was young but yeah, I was like, oh, this is the movie because it's exactly this, the same <laughs> title. Because it's, because it's called <laughs> The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I was like, people talk about this movie and that's it. You, you, didn't, you didn't know about the space. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> I wasn't aware. I, I, was a, I was a noob. I didn't know. Um, <laughs> but like the first time I watched this movie after having seen that movie being my only Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, I was like, oh, okay. You know, I, I get where where all of these things that it's pulled from and obviously like the the new one is much more like graphic i feel like i like the i like the subtleties of the the 74 version of the of the film a lot um and of the storyline i think that it's 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 truly centered around you know this this economic these these economic issues for these people and you know them having to to do basically whatever it takes to to survive um and then becoming this weird like family unit because also you know they're so secluded and all of these things you know all of this stuff leads to the fact that they they become the people that they are and it is truly terrifying honestly um those kids are so stupid <laughs> they're 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 so dumb they just go wandering around into people's houses and stuff like no wonder they get murdered you know the like uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, you were, what you were saying about like the economic stuff like the actual like themes and stuff of this movie like everybody misses because it's planted like you said like very subtly throughout it's like on the radio or whatever like you have to listen mm-hmm. to like the background noise almost to like gather it's just it's 
It's just so well done. And it's that like documentary esque style that also makes mm-hmm. it so unsettling. Like for also for like me watching it, I like I was like, this feels so real. It's mm-hmm. such a raw feeling movie. Like, it's that part thing that can't be captured again, which is like why there's just you can't compare it to the other ones because you can't get that feeling again, like that grainy. Mm-hmm nastiness of it <laughs> no yeah because honestly like after this first one it really just becomes you know about the the gimmick you know it's 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 about the fact that it's you know this this guy who has a chainsaw and wears people's faces and has a crazy family and like that's that's kind of like where they start to, to lean into but f- you know for a little brief moment it's this this nice pure thing that is you know um you know, very fascinating. It's a, the whole monologue that the that the um the the brother, I guess I assume, um is 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 saying in the in the car when they pick him up at the beginning. You know, talking about the the factory getting shut down. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I know it's just this strange concept of of living in the seventies and realizing that no people totally just like picked up weird people on the side of the road and like drove them down the street a little bit and like that was uh, totally no, no fine. <laughs> I got I got you, man. Get in here. No, yeah, you don't look sketchy at all. Come on down. No, they, and- they like they, they let him talk like like an insane person for a good long while. It's only until he cuts himself they're like enough. No, yeah. literally. When he takes the knife, they're like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> you step too far." <laughs> we we don't mind if you ramble on and act scary and all that, but <laughs> you can't be doing that. <laughs> it's definitely not that pie, pocket knife. Don't you do it? Uh, so the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for for me, the first one um was and like the franchise at large was again one of those that like i had grown up hearing about um but since i wasn't really like a horror person um i ended up not really watching this first one until i watched it for uh, a class in in college um and I had never seen it. We were going to have to watch it independently. He was trying to figure out how to like post it online. And I just said, screw it. And I just went and bought it. Um, And um, I sat down, popped it in. And, you know, you, you never really know what to expect watching like the original of something that you've heard so much about. Um, and it was unsettling, you know, on every level. Um, and it is, you know, that the the seventies filmmaking style, you know, when you look at things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, you look at things like Mash, you know, that late sixties, early seventies sort of thing, um, where uh, they're including zooms, you know, they're including background noise, they're including this sort of cross chatter that helps ground it into that reality and give it like you were talking about that documentary feel um it does really help and like the 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 faux narration you know that it that it opens with it really sells it almost in this kind of um coen brothers way with like fargo you know this is a true story you know um and so it lends itself immediately to this idea of no matter how farcical or extreme whatever it is that you're about to see you know may get you know it's reality you know and it it primes you for that idea it's it's a Um, weird way to like trick your mind even though mm -hmm. like even though you're aware it's not real it's Mm -hmm. still just yeah (laughs) um and so like immersiveness Mm-hmm. Well, and especially back when this came out, you know, 74, that's the time where people were eventually starting to, you know, get a little bit more cautious about picking people up on the side of the road. Because at that point, you know, serial killers were becoming more commonplace, you know, in the American psyche, in the American media scape. Um, and so it played on, especially for, again, the context of the time a very, very heightened fear 
you know, this idea of picking someone up on the, on the side of the road of stopping off at the wrong place, you know, and the isolation that still existed within that, that modern landscape. Um, and if you listen to one of the, the commentaries, the one that's on, uh, the, the copy that I have, Hooper talks about how a lot of the ideas for the context of the family, the context of the films quote bubbled up from the times, you know? Mm. Um, and so it has all of this very palpable, real pulpy tension, you know, that's constantly strumming throughout the movie. Uh, and that abnormal score that, uh, Hooper won't talk about how he made the sounds for, you know, it, it's shrouded in all of this mystery. And, you know, this is also one of those movies everyone says you know you can't make such and such movie today you can't make the original texas chainsaw massacre today like people would file complaints you know people would be sued you know like it's if you really watch it especially like on a, on a really big screen that's got really good quality you can see that like the actor that plays franklin has been sitting in that chair you know for so long in grueling it's conditions so that the chair is soiled he's got like blisters and like a rash mm, on his yeah. arms it's, it's a real man it's a filthy <laughs> disgusting visceral experience of a movie at times um and just by the, the way go ahead yeah the other thing about it is that it's almost kind of like a like a slow burn buildup. yeah also like relatively like it does such a build up until it's really like once we get to the scene where she gets into like the room full of bones and like she like looks at the chicken that's in there and like this you know that damn chicken like that chicken already knows what she does what she's about to learn like the chicken like mm -hmm. the chicken's like welcome to hell like welcome to <laughs> hell. i've been here this is this is where you lose your mind mm -hmm. <laughs> up and a chair. then you die and then you die. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's truly insane. I mean, in one of the commentaries, H Hooper talks about how, like, uh, at the dinner table scene, uh, there there's like a set of chicken feet on the table, and like, if I'm not mistaken, he says that like the chicken feet when they started filming were like still wet with embalming fluid. <laughs> like, I mean, like it was just insane conditions for making a fucking movie. Well, don't they like um, really cut her? Or um, what what is it what is it they 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 do something to her at the table uh yeah something she ends like up that, getting yeah. cut and there is like a whole a debate about whether or not she did actually get cut and and some people claim that she did and some people from the set claim that she did and some claim that she didn't and hooper doesn't really know interesting um what he does know is that that was shot day for night and the whole house was essentially covered in a trash bag that trapped in all the smell as well and so it resulted in all of the actors getting like migraines and like puking their brains out of open windows um, oh my god so it so was just delightful see, man, that's what i'm talking about like this movie's like metal as fuck i love it <laughs> <laughs> you can't it, it this was, is truly something you can't make it it was this way uh. was such a formative it was such a formative thing for me man listening to like yeah and metal for the first time and watching texas chainsaw massacre i was just like it explains a lot I was, yeah i was in it it does it does um, <laughs> we need to also mention how not even just a little bit but like by how much texas chainsaw massacre predates like the slasher genre yeah because uh, like way before halloween and has marilyn burns gets not enough credit as like the actual like first final girl for like yeah as far well, as slashers go it is funny that you bring that up because before i get into talking about sort of the rest of the franchise at large as a, as a unit what is so fascinating also about this movie is that you know sally is our final girl but our main character or our main focus character for so much of the movie is franklin mm. And it is fascinating how much time we spend with Franklin, how much, you know, we focus around him. He's our isolated one. You know, he's our one that I think that we're supposed to be on a certain level sympathizing with regularly, even though he, he oftentimes is, is just sort of awkward 
to the point that he self isolates. Um, we but they, spend yeah, a lot of time with Franklin. He is the one to sympathize with. He's the one that like gets left behind um, mm-hmm. and all that. You know, he's 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 the burden to the other people. That that's the fun like juxtaposition, right? That's part of the film also is how how that group of people who like or are civilized good people right how they treat franklin who is uh part of their family as opposed to like the crazy cannibal family but look how much respect and care they give to their disabled family member Mm -hmm. (laughs) with with grandpa Mm -hmm. like (laughs) that's part of like the whole thing too like it's yeah there's a lot more going on in the movie than uh Unless you've really, you know, dove into it. <laughs> like a lot of people just don't realize. No, absolutely. Um, so with the, the franchise at large, I guess, um, I had never, again, really seen any of them. I had seen <laughs> bits of some of them. Um, but the first sequel, actually, of any Texas Chainsaw movie that I saw start to finish was the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was right, the first right. <laughs> true Texas Chainsaw sequel that I saw start to finish. Um, and so, like, without any sort of being exhausted on the fumes of this franchise at that point, you right. know, I certainly wasn't disappointed by that movie. I understood why people were like, oh, Leatherface is just sort of like a mute brute. He is. Um but like i thought that that movie was a ball and a half um and so then going back it, and i think it gets there it does it's a it's a it, it's work to get there but it gets there it's it's, it's so really funny good. when it starts up <laughs> it, it 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 can be worth it for just the bus scene and the sally scene is yeah is, is mm-hmm. what makes it worth it so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those two. Um, if we let's go ahead and skip ahead and talk about that, the most recent one, the 2022. Sure. What I love the best part, besides there's just an insane bus scene that's just so worthy of just any horror movie. It's so so good, so insane. But the best part of that movie is just how much it says, like, no, fuck like the legacy sequel trash where we bring back, you know, like an obvious dig. And I guess Halloween would be like the obvious choice, but like literally any franchise, even not just horror, but any franchise has done it. Where they bring back like the original hero, and spoiler alert, I'm sorry everyone, and they just they they, they gear it up like this is what it's going to be, where like the original hero comes back to save the day, but they do not. <laughs> they yeah, get absolutely. It's they a get absolutely spectacular. Right. It's one of the best punchlines. It's one of the best like setup punchlines of a joke in a horror movie ever because we also get that like very like most of the movie is like her coming she's getting there eventually (laughs) (laughs) and when she finally gets there she has to monologue for a little bit and it's Mm. perfect right uh no um i cannot I mean, the, the it will it will forever stay in my mind not just her like, <laughs> again it, it's it's the it's the cut to her face that's like, oh, like <laughs> <laughs> but but she's so not down good. yet she's not done no no see they got there they did like have your cake and eat it too thing like she still gets to yeah to do mm-hmm. something to do something but she, but she does eat it <laughs> oh my gosh no yes and it's it's too good honestly i think that the a lot of the i go to this new movie for the gore mostly because like you know the the premise is is fine um it's 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 the same kind of like political thing you know it's a bunch of kids coming to to gentrify an area you know because they've got money and these people don't um and and they get ended up you know into into leather face shenanigans but it's really once he, once Leatherface starts starts a killing up a storm that it, it just starts to go into overdrive for me. That very first kill where he like breaks that dude's arm with one movement and just stabs him with it. I, I was done. I was ready for this roller coaster ride. I was in. It's like an it's like an animal <laughs> move. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. And I think that that's why it was so much fun. Where it's like, they would just were like, what if we just didn't care? Oh, the, uh, the, the, the sunflower field scene is also good. There's a lot of good moments in the new one. I, I yeah. don't care mm-hmm. for like, I don't care for the actual movie as a whole. I don't think but it is really, really strong. Like isolated. No. Movies. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so then going back and like, uh, you know, I've now seen the first and you hadn't really seen other than the remake, any of the other sequels. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know that there were so many sequels. Honestly, I There's was like, lot. this is it. It's a yeah. lot. <laughs> it's this one movie and we're done. <laughs> and so like I, with, I actually okay. did a whole ranking, uh, I think last year. Yeah. Of, of, of the franchise. Um, and that hasn't changed. <laughs> I look back on it. So. Uh, <laughs> good. 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 <laughs> um, so like going back and and with like the the first one and the most recent one as a framework i was like all right let's let's really go down this journey and um i gotta tell you i actually really enjoy for the most part like if i'm looking at the whole franchise at large the first one to the fourth one i actually really enjoy pretty much all four of those movies to varying yeah, yeah. degrees See it. I put in my ranking. I lit. I literally put like one, two, three as the strongest ones. Okay. Um, for, I put one, two, three, and four is a lot further. Is more further down for me, but <laughs> but, <laughs> <one> of, <laughs> but I. Uh, it's, I a, it's it's well, good. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three in a row. I I do like um, two obviously like it. I already talked a little about too, but like for sure, like he Cooper at least understood like that you have to like do something else and not just recreate the first one. And so he just like swings more towards like black comedy, like uh, craziness. That's great. Which it's I, almost which I appreciate. It's almost a little bit uh, you know, Raimi ish, you know, it's almost a little bit evil dead, you know, yeah, army of darkness. Let's get a little bit more insane. That's a good comparison for sure. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's big. It's so much bigger. It's, it's um, brighter. It's campy. It's, it's fun. Yeah, well, here, here's the other thing about the original also is that for, for it being called the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, before you watch it, you're like, Oh my God. But, um, it is like very sparing with its actual violence. It's, it's one of those movies that again is so scary because it's the implication mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the most part. There's definitely mm-hmm. moments of like violence that you see on screen, but for the big, big ones are just the scary implication of what the violence is. Um, no, this one, though, as opposed as opposed to the second one, which just goes for broke and is very gory. <laughs> it's um, it's Tom Savini who does the uh, the the visual effects for this one, the gore effects for this one, and you know Tom Savini has done, you know he's he's a horror icon, Dawn of the Dead uh uh you know from dusk till dawn you know i mean like tom savini has been around the block for a long time um and he's the one that did the gore effects on this one and i gotta tell you out of all of the texas chainsaw movies that i've seen the one whose gore probably and and just also visual flair sticks out to me the most is absolutely the texas chainsaw massacre too it's this neon washed acid trip hyper violent creep show yeah it is man you 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 feel like you're on something watching it whether you are (laughs) or not like you're like i i'm i'm tripping right now watching this movie no one made this. this No, there's yeah, so honestly, much. there's so I love, much. I love the fact that they not only like you know take the family unit, but then they 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 amplify it by by adding in a completely new version of this kind of family member character, and like the fact that they're they're in a new town and they're living in this like old abandoned carnival amusement park. Like it's it's fantastic. It's it's such a good they're, setting for some shenanigans. Their like layer is like the Grinch's layer mm-hmm. yes 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 <laughs> it's got tunnels or it's like something from like a burton batman you know it's like this it's insane crazy. i mean honestly the entire movie feels like a burton batman film almost you know very bright and colorful but like with the acid you know yeah. poured all over it you know um i was i was truly unsettled um when 
what's his name? Um, the the plate headed character, the vet. Vietnam mm-hmm. vet. I was truly unsettled when he comes in and is just like digging at his hair, you know, and you don't yeah. know With that the, the hair piece yes. yet. Oh, it's so yeah, nasty! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just right, right into my skin, you know, like it just. And that's the kind of stuff that definitely, you know, goes goes right to my core of of unsettling for me. Um, and so, like, this movie for me, honestly... Um, so much fun. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is probably, in all honesty, my top of all of the Texas Chainsaw films. Yeah. I, like it's... I love the explosiveness of it. I love the insanity of it. When we started out and it was that bridge sequence... Mm-hmm. I knew that we were in for like a, a whole wild fucking ride, you know, that, from that. That's, I mean, that's the genius of it, like I said. And like, it's crazy that it's the same filmmaker who yeah. did it. Because mm-hmm. he just very, like, very wisely was like, I'm not doing the same thing again. I'm just doing. I'm just, well, I'm and he doing, waited. Literally, you know, I'm, he waited a long it. time. It was um, 12 years in between those movies. You know, he did not immediately jump on a sequel. He only did it when he felt that he had something. But it also <laughs> he had, feels... He had a lot of somethings. <laughs> it also feels very influenced by the fact that we're like, now we're in the 80s, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, it really feels like we're watching, like, a, a TMNT movie or something, you know? We're watching, like... Where they where they go back in time to feudal Japan like this is this version but for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise you know it's yeah. it's, a, it's a fun it's a fun romp we're gonna let it <laughs> off the hook you know and no yeah I guess I guess, I guess that's the other thing it's 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 very of like it's very in the time mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. similar to the original in a different way it's like very of that moment in time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah you know we're we're properly getting into you know that that late 80s, early 90s feel where also, you know, we were doing all sorts of insane shit with Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street at that point. And so, you know, it's this this thing that is also trying to compete amongst this thing that it helped create by the time that you get to the second one. Um, the third one I thought was good, much slower again you know it's really fascinating how like one and three are kind of these like pillars of stability almost in terms of them being to a degree more grounded you know a little bit more naturalized on a certain level um whereas i think like two and four go for big swings you know four is definitely doing a lot (laughs) Um, um Yeah, and I like three, four for that. Th- yeah, three like goes back to like the f- or the formula, for lack of a better term, of like people lining up to get killed. Obviously, um, so I I think the first half does not work. Mm-hmm. Um, it just isn't there. Of like, it's like highway horror, right? It's all these people off on the highway getting taken, um, by while they're facing the gang, but. The second half is like much more lighthearted, which again is like that like dark sense of you know that sick sense of humor that the mm-hmm. first two movies have. Um, which again I appreciate like that's the part and that's the part of the remake that like is fun also when it's like has that kind of strange sense of humor to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they can't really pinpoint. Um, it's like it gets campier the further it goes it takes too long to get to that point like you wish that Mm -hmm. it had been that way from the start it feels like Mm -hmm. they decided to do that it feels like they shot like chronological order and then decided to be like let's just let's just kind of boring let's make it a little more fun yeah let's (laughs) let's zazz it up a little bit the further in yeah let's let vigo have some fun um, no, for yeah, sure. that's right. Vigo v- v- Mortensen. Uh, K- Ken Forey steals the show. Oh, what me. doesn't he steal the show in? <laughs> Name me the horror movie <laughs> that he literally. doesn't show up in, that he doesn't run away with it. He just, he just literally is there to just kick ass. <laughs> he is. Oh, oh, he's oh, the char- homie. Um, he's from, the character uh, Dawn of the Dead. Need. Yes, 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 yes. He's, I'm sorry, all of these. He's the guy you need who like. One of those rare characters in horror movies who chooses fight instead of flight. Yeah, Joe Grizzly in Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) Like, no. 
like, no, I'm going to take you. I'm going to wrestle for it. Yeah. We're going to scrap it out. And here yeah, it works not great. You know, it, it it's, it's, works it's really good. So fantastically in, in three. Um, four. Four, the only issue for me with four is that um, I think that it could have been trimmed down a lot. You know, I don't think that we necessarily have the plot to support all of Matthew McConaughey vamping uh, for. <laughs> He's having period. a good time. For me, it's too. It's so messy. It it's is. So it's a messy like, movie. It, it, it's so choppily like edited and put like it's hard to follow all that's going on. I do appreciate that like i'm looking back what i wrote about it i'm like there's secret societies pizza dinners somebody getting licked and licked all over cybernetic oh, yeah. rooms <laughs> there's, no, like there's a lot, a lot to like about it <laughs> but <laughs> i like the the trick of um because because this is the one that has the daughter because it's matthew no Connor. that's the third one See, I keep switching the them The third one is always the one that has the daughter. Okay. The fourth one uh, has is the, one the, with the, the real estate agent girlfriend. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. Well, yeah. th- that's this is the, the one best with part of the movie Weger. for me. The best part of the movie for me is uh, is, is Darla. That, um, because she's like, uh, she at least stands out in this franchise as like one of a villain who is like, like put together, you know, like competent, yeah. like what can trick people like into thinking that she's normal, mm-hmm. <laughs> as mm-hmm. opposed to like all the all the other Texas Chainsaw villains are just like insane, and you know it, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, um, so well, she's and, she's unique in that aspect. Uh, what's interesting? It's funny that you mentioned that you can always tell the the insane Texas Chainsaw villains. What's really interesting for me about the the batch of the recent films you know starting with the remake going up to leatherface in 2017 is that a lot of our villains in those films oftentimes are not you know obviously the family and and the is a part of the horror of those films but oftentimes those films really start to put in a lot more of this secondary human antagonist you know uh those are the films where you start to get like the bad sheriff that that burned down the family house, you know, and oh, and some of those God. sorts of, of B plots yeah. into it. Um, you yep. know, the the terrible psychiatric uh, you know, people at the the insane asylum in the fourth one, you know. Mm-hmm. Of um, course. And so it's it's really interesting that you also mentioned that because again, whenever they introduce whoever is supposed to be our villain outside the family it's it's just as obvious you know it's just as yeah, much of like a here it comes i'm oh, yeah. I'm, so, and I'm, there I, they are. I'm so evil i'm just <laughs> I'm, I'm just fucked up i just love doing and torturing get enough. oh boy I, here i go killing again that's right uh, <laughs> why are you like this who cares i had a bad and my dad was insane too <laughs> That's right. It's a part of my blood. Um, Look at my dust grandparent. What are your thoughts on the on the remake era? You know, starting with the the two thousand three remake and then going up to. Um. I so okay. So since the the two thousand three one was the first one I saw. Um. But rewatching it, you know, after watching, uh, you know, going from the beginning of the franchise again and working our way back through this movie was like, what if? hear me out we got a lot of influences from like michael bay like everybody is shiny and wet and sweaty you know this movie is just hot like <laughs> like so many extra levels that it's just it comes out of absolute nowhere um but doesn't really go anywhere either it's just like trying to i guess evoke this like idea of what the 70s was like but not really with this like 90s flair on it um I mean, I like the I like the remake well enough. Um, I think I still prefer the original. I think that the remake starts to to go too far afield, you know. Um, but I do I enjoy the the new family dynamic. I enjoy the 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 Leatherface new family that we get. You know, the 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 sheriff that ends up being a part of the whole thing as well. You know, I I enjoy him. Um, He's having a lot of fun eating the scenery. Yeah, that actor does great. 
Oh, he's fucking amazing. Well, let's talk about like I I really I I wouldn't say I love it. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel strongly about it, but I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I, I think that the remake, the 2003 remake is successfully it's like you were saying, like it swaps out like the grainy, like documentary style of the original for like that. It's like sleek, high def, like sweaty, you mm-hmm. know, hot <laughs> Michael Bay. Yeah. Um, I think this movie does a really good job at like for me at least being like genuinely upsetting. Or mm-hmm. like the like the nail, the nails on the wall bit is mm-hmm. so like, oh my god, the the salt in the wound, the uh and in addition to that, it has a psychological stuff. Also, like one of the scariest, if not the scariest scene is that damn sheriff in the car making the poor kid piss his pants. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. It's, no, it's absolutely terrifying. It's, just, it's it's so good at being like so intense in its own way. And like it is also kind of. It's one of those movies that was like a along with Saul that led into like that kind of high def early 2000s you know torture porn or just like me just mean spirited horror mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean like, <laughs> i think it does a great job at that and being effective with it just in its own way um i think where it loses it is like the reveal of the family instead of it ramping up like the insanity like the original does the reveal of the family to me like lets all the air out because of that fucking kid Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh because right they, because they they literally introduce like a good-hearted kid who like come this way you know like i'll lead you to safety like what the fuck is this it's Our poor it's little so good like Schmeagle. it's so crazy that this kid is in this particular movie and not like a later one in like the 2000s era for this like mm-hmm. that's what i'm like it loses all the air it's such like a up until the moment that kid comes in it is like up to here of like this is so like this is so intense and so like disturbing and upsetting just by like being in violent and mean. Mm-hmm. And then we get out of nowhere little little, little buck tooth little buck saving tooth, grace little buck <laughs> coming in and being like, follow me to safety. What? Uh <clears throat> I honestly like really movie. in I honestly really enjoyed as far as like the the Texas Chainsaw remake and um, Texas Chainsaw uh, the beginning. The sheriff for me is the most effective villain probably of those two films, you know. Leatherface I think definitely starts to take a little bit more of of a secondary role in those for me and the sheriff runs away with it. Um you know this this man sort of twisting the family into his own weird vision you know making them call him a different name you know and adopting this different persona that's all the stuff i think for me that that i find the best of those two films and again you're right it's mean-spirited and he is a (laughs) mean-spirited character like he's nasty Mm -hmm. he's Uh, a bastard yeah truly honestly yeah yeah that's um to talk about the beginning also like the beginning for me is like the worst one in my opinion i think that's the that's the lowest one but it is uh uh, r lee or me there who was just like lauren said just chewing it up just Mm -hmm. having having a blast being an absolute bastard no for sure and honestly like i guess of the two i think i i guess i prefer the beginning to the remake if only because it's it's giving me something different you know i feel like the the remake is you know very much doing the you know we've got our kids they go on this trip it's 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 other than us amping up the the violence and the and the sex and i guess you know cleaning up a little bit of the of the polishing out some of the political things of the beginning one and filling that time with other stuff to do like talking about drugs for a while um i don't know i think i think that i prefer just how twisted and weird you know this the building of the family was um i don't remember any of the the people who actually got murdered in that you know it's it's not the part that you remember well you get the draft we'll dodger see. the draft we'll dodger's see, brother the, that's the yeah oh um, that's yeah, actually right 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 so that's actually where i disagree i feel like the beginning has the opportunity to finally 
do something different and then does not. And then there's okay. like does not like it's like the beginning. Okay, we'll see the origin of Leatherface and all that. But like we see Leatherface like be born, grow up, murder someone, get the chainsaw within like the first 15 minutes. So it's like, okay, yeah. so it's not that. And then okay. it's like, okay, well then we'll build up the family. But to me, it's like that part isn't interesting either because they're just all insane from the beginning. Like there's no like, how did they get this way? Like they're just all fucking nuts. Yeah. For, from the moment the movie starts it's like and then it turns into a slasher like you said like then the then the teens show up and like okay let's kill the teens oogie doogie no yeah <laughs> here here we go again <laughs> and it's like we could like we could have done it we could have done something different which is also the funny part of a uh, of leatherface 2017 which has like the yeah. same opportunity given to it and i think it tries a little harder to be different it's it and it is a little different, but it also still isn't a very compelling anything. <laughs> Honestly, I find the 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 franchise starts to just blur a lot for me after a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's um well the only it's, other it's strange though how much the franchises are related to Leatherface is like almost like an icon, like a like a mascot. There's mm-hmm. the because only other always... ones that are Oh no. Yeah. But no, I agree. He's he's a uh an interesting like slasher icon for sure. Um but the only other ones are the 2017 Leatherface, which is another uh take on a prequel, and uh Texas Chainsaw 3D. Um uh, mm-hmm. which I walked away liking. Um even though it's like bad, like to laughable degrees much of the time. Yeah, it's a silly movie. <laughs> Well, that's but, a lot of the 3D-isms as well, you know? They gotta oh, yeah. really put it in your face, as always. Here's, here's the saving grace for me. Like, I, I love the parts of Texas Chainsaw 3D that people hate. Because to me, what happens with Texas Chainsaw 3D is that it does the tired uh, slasher thing and then keeps going. And it's the third act that then gets to do something, like, really, like, stupidly fun <laughs> and different. Um that I love, which they literally like a, a climax set and then a literal slaughterhouse um, with a meat grinder death and everything. It, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, and like, I, if there is, you know, definitely one thing to say about, I think all of the, the remake era films um, is they do always find at least one moment to put in something that is um memorably vicious there you, you know go. each of them has something that is also i think also occasionally narratively surprising you know leatherface did have whatever i'll say about that movie the setup of one kid being leatherface and then it's surprising oh, to pull and then that the rug out from under us. us yeah oh my gosh yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like they always do at least in every single instance do something that makes me go that's the thing that i remember very distinctly from this movie um you know even though you always switch the girl being in four you know the girl is at least like a standout thing for you yeah no because you know that moment will work so perfectly it's it's the perfect horror lead up to like oh they're gonna save this this child from this home and then she ends up like stabbing her with like a shiv bone and it's perfect yeah she's been hiding in a uh, like a a falling apart doll Mm -hmm. wonderful (laughs) To go back to four real quick with uh, Renee Zellweger's character, um, that's so much. That movie's fun because uh, the main character there that she plays like is just having none of it. She's like pissed off about it. She's not like scared really. She's scared a couple of times, but like for the most part, she's like just mad that she's yeah. been kidnapped and put in the situation. <laughs> <laughs> she's <clears throat> She wants like, to talk you. to someone's supervisor. You know, like she she's, is she's so mad. <laughs> she is upset. So. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy the the dynamic with her and and the you know the the the, the girlfriend, the re- reporter, you know, where she's just like, I don't understand why you put up with any of this. You know? Yeah, you <laughs> and and basically like, she's like, are, like he's hot though. 
<laughs> and he's misunderstood and he's a part of a secret cabal. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm going to change the world. <laughs> She's like, no, he's a weirdo and you're being used. I'm and leaving. everything that you said sounds insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I had to rank these films, I'd go two, one, three, four. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The new one? Yeah, the 2022 one. Hell yeah. Texas Chainsaw 3D. Fantastic. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 2003 remake. Okay. Beginning and then Leatherface. That's probably how I would rank them. Leatherface last. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't even think I could try. Um, <laughs> just by eyeballing them alone. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Let's see, the second one, the first one, the third one. Um, I'll do the fourth one, then the last one. Okay. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm going to do the last one and then the fourth one. Okay. That's what I'm actually going to do. I really enjoyed the last one. It's it's a hoot and a half, and it, it doesn't care that there's that the plot doesn't matter. <laughs> and I'm it, here it for tosses the fun. it out the window. It no, like, sets yeah, it off of that. And then it's like, <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. It's not fun. <laughs> no, yeah, what's fun is watching all of these people I'm, die. I'm not having fun yet, are you? Okay, let's talk <laughs> about the window. When he kicks her Once... through the, the stairs, man, I, I cackled. <laughs> it's wonderful, wonderful cinema. Um, let's see, and then and then we start to get into the weeds. Um, then I'll do I'll do the remake. What do, what do I have uh, left? Beginning 3D and Leatherface. Okay, I'll do I'll do the remake. 3D, the one after the remake, beginning, beginning, and then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Leatherface last. That movie was was really dingy to watch. It's it it's a it's a really it sucked because it, it it's and especially because it's like the final stretch one. You know, you're like okay, this is it. You know, mm -hmm. unless you're watching unless you're rewatching the most recent one, then that one is like it's the final stretch, and you're like, what a drag. Yeah. yeah honestly and it just it doesn't it doesn't focus really on anything that that matters it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be a prequel to anything and then it just it it does the like m night Shyamalan twist at the end and you're like was it even worth it guys <laughs> that, that's what i'm talking about we're like that's what i'm talking about the, the beginning is like here we can do a prequel setup thing nah we don't follow through with that leatherface mm. is like okay now we're actually doing something different but it's not good <laughs> it's, it's not good at all it feels like an angsty teenage romance it's, for yeah, 90 it's, percent it's, of it <laughs> yeah it's like i know i don't care at all uh, some, some weird <laughs> shit going on oh god um, my ranking my ranking from best to worst i do yeah, like go for one it. two three one two three uh jump to the remake okay. 2003 remake uh 2022 okay then 3d Okay. Fantastic. Uh, then for the next generation, <laughs> then Leatherface, then New Beginning. Oof. Okay. No, I accept oh, that. I, That's all fair. What did I like? Hold on. What did I like about Leatherface? Why did I put it above? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh. No, I just put points for actually breaking the formula. I guess that's, that's fair. That's where that's it was fair. at. Like I said, <laughs> I no, saw. I, I get that because it's not. Yeah, it 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 could be like. Never mind. There's nothing more to say about it. Whatever, we're done. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'll never. I'll never watch you again. No, that's right. I mean. I honestly you shall shit sit upon my actually you'll shit upon my shelf <laughs> really that's right you shall, uh, you shall shit upon my shelf that's, that's right, right. <laughs> um, 
but no, like, uh, talk about like the least watched one of them, you know. Um, Thank you, Texas again. Chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all you've given us. Who knows where it'll go next? Because so many people hated this recent one. Yeah. A lot of them. Think... See, well, th- that's the hard. There have been a lot of movies that like I haven't liked that much lately. But a lot of people hated, but hated like for for me, like that are not valid reasons. It's yeah, like, it's hard to like dislike a movie, but you're like, I don't like it, but not for like the dumb reasons that everyone else doesn't like it. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's I don't like it, you know, not because of that. I don't like it because you know it's just you know yeah. it's mid, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's fine, guys. <laughs> You know. I've I've had a I liked mid when it started. Now like literally just anything like everything is mid, and I'll tell oh. you why. It's like I'll tell you why because the generation that came up with mid is now a little bit older and more yeah. like <laughs> more disenchanted with stuff. I'm like it's not mid. It's just that you're older and you don't get the same feeling of intensity anymore from from whatever yeah, whatever whatever it was music or mu- music or movies whatever. You've got to go and, and search for that feeling in different places, in different ways, yeah. in different experiences. No, nostalgia sorry, all the sorry, way. Sorry. Yeah. Lean I into will, the feeling. <laughs> I, will, I will not move forward ever. That is truly one of the, <laughs> the that's truly one of the blessings um, of horror as a franchise, or not a, as a franchise, but as a genre, is that like there are so many really wonderful blessings of like fantastically different kinds of things that give you a rush in ways that um a lot of other genres i don't think can really give you like you know the the fear response is truly like a gripping one of a kind one and um, watching a horror movie is just like there's that level of intensity again it's like mm-hmm. that it's that connection that i always talk about like for me firstly i'm just like the to like heavy you know like extreme music or whatever because it's horror is such like it, it can be such an extreme art mm-hmm. so you go in with like here we go it's not it's never like for many people it is if you're just like that kind of person but like it's never like a leisurely watch <laughs> no yeah um so now we're going to get into a, a slightly interesting part of the show uh, we're going to talk about Child's Play uh, as a franchise, which Nick has seen none of. Fantastic. Uh, and he's going to listen to to Lauren and I talk I, about it. It's true. <laughs> I've never seen a single Child's Play movie. So before we, we do get into our thoughts on it, what are, what are your general conceptions of Child's Play? There are eight of these movies and now a TV show. So it's true. From my understanding, Child's Play is about this possessed doll called Chucky. And he's possessed by uh, like a murderer, a serial killer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, Like his soul is trapped in the doll or or it's it's just in the doll. I don't know if it's trapped. Who knows? Um, And that and I it's like I don't know if it's a slasher or not. I know he kills people. Um. Well, I guess it is. This is the slasher episode. So it is a slasher franchise. <laughs> uh, We're counting it. Um, and from, I don't know any, I really, I don't know like the tone for the most part. I think from my understanding, it like progressively gets campier. I don't know if it's campy from the start. Maybe it is just by sheer premise. Um, isn't Aubrey Plaza in the new one? Yeah. <laughs> She's in the remake. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, so that was right. Um reboot, I guess, and, more so. Yeah, it's it is like a reboot. That is about it. There is a clip from one of the sequels that Chucky says, uh, assume the position. That was a constant replay for me and some friends of mine, just because it was hilarious. It still was <laughs> hilarious. Assume the position. That's funny. That's funny right there, as Mater would say. I'm losing my mind as I watch cars related media for every day. <laughs> However many months it's been. Mater. <laughs> it's all Mater. Mater lives rent free in my head. I rewatched Cars <laughs> 2 recently. That's the Mater show. Mater That's has his own heart. shorts. Mater oh, watching Mater has all of his own shorts. Um, so 
um, I guess it made her a part of me now. Anyway, back to Child's Play. Um, also, from my understanding, the TV show is apparently very good. And this is a series that has, like, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, don't know, haven't seen them, like, strong uh, LGBTQ, like, either uh, either representation, I don't know, or just, like, uh, uh, allyship. Like, just, you know... <laughs> yeah uh, that that's about it though that's like all i know cool okay honestly uh I mean, pretty you, decent pretty yeah, decent yeah. not bad not bad so not, not bad. having seen any of them like you pretty much like you checked a lot of yeah the you did pretty good you did pretty good um so talk about something that is 100 percent, especially after having watched them all something that i really only had a conception of as an idea Mm. <laughs> uh, and that's where i'll start dear <laughs> um okay so the child's the child's play movies actually surprised me a lot i had never seen any of these movies before we we started this endeavor and i was i was pretty pretty shocked i guess by what they all entailed because I, you unlike nick i knew very little of what the 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 child's play franchise was all about i knew that it was a doll that killed people and that was that was pretty much like that the end the start and the end yeah exactly i was like it could have been like a toy story thing like it's just or you know small soldiers where it's like they're the, the toy is alive you know and i had the one leg up because i knew it was like a serial killer person or whatever that's like, yeah no. <laughs> I don't I don't so, I don't know if that's like a review. I don't know if that's like a plot twist even. Oh no, oh, that's no. the beginning of the movie. It's not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so like we we start out the the first one and we are like following the the serial the serial killer, you know, he's being chased by the cops and it is literally he like runs into a toy store and and does some some voodoo. Yeah, he does voodoo. He does <laughs> He does, he does literal voodoo, voodoo on on this doll and and puts his soul into this doll, and um, that is how the transformation happens. And it's like lightning strikes and like a storm cloud rolls in and everything. And and the cop is this like, "This man, I'm so this man sounds like a genius. That is, <laughs> or and maybe not. Like, maybe that's very stupid to me. That's like an amazing like." I'm being chased. Like, what do I do? Like, I'm out of options. Uh, I, know, I, I know a little voodoo. I guess. Passable <laughs> voodoo. Just a little <laughs> resurrection <laughs> voodoo. I, da- I dabble. I dabble. In I By the way, I should I should really frame I should really frame some of this for you. Um, the person that we're witnessing do voodoo. He looks like it's Brad Dorif. Okay. It's Grima right, Worm right, telling yeah, himself. Yeah, 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 that's who plays him. I, I, yeah. I knew that also. I, I knew and the And so he is not just it's the voice true. actor. He is also the physical actor. So we're also watching, you know, like 1980s Brad Dorif with like long, you know, semi mullet hair. He looks like Tommy Wiesel from like The Room. Oh, hi, Mark. Doing, like- doing voodoo on this doll. And so. That's who they should have gotten to play Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> and then you're you're right, right. Right. <laughs> that's right uh and so keep going though um and so yeah so he he voodoo's himself into this doll and and the cop shows up and he's like oh gosh i i guess i got him or something he died the end and so like everybody moves on like nothing happened you know because like he's in this doll and i think that nobody the, the... cared uh keep going um the funny, the funny thing about Chucky as a as a franchise is the fact that I think that it's really clever that he, you know, he can hide in plain sight. Mm. You know, unlike unlike Michael, that has to, you know, um, hide behind stuff and like you know sneak away really quickly. You know, he's a doll, and so for a really long time he is so unassuming. You know, you can just literally just play dead. And everybody just assumes that the the person is is crazy for thinking that this doll is out here murdering everybody. And so this woman ends up getting the Chucky doll for her son, who's really wants one, and they end up bonding. And it's this whole thing of like, is this like 
five-year-old child out here murdering everybody or is it or is it oh, this that's... two foot tall doll that's like the same height as him basically you know running around that's fine. It, and it's it's just okay, so it's, a, it's a really good time the, honestly the first movie they think it's the kid it's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's well fun. honestly <laughs> the the throughout the the chucky franchise the sort of one of the main running themes especially in that first three movies is it's uh and in particular in those first three movies the whole thing is like it's obviously andy and andy is our sort of main character for those first three films um and those first three movies are honestly very much more in the vein of like standard 80s 90s you know nightmare on elm street horror slasher stuff i love them they're honestly truthfully um generally speaking i think that i prefer the the child's play franchise to like the friday the 13th or nightmare on elm street franchise if only partially just because it is so openly campy openly insane openly big you know sort of from the word go um and I find that really remarkable um, and really enjoyable, you know, that it just is so openly um, having a blast, you know, f- by design. Um, I really enjoy the fact also that these movies, um, for the most part, are com- like they pick up pretty much like where you left off with our characters and we move forward. Um, you know, like the we get to Child's Play 2 and like Andy has gotten older, but like Chucky is still trying to get to him because the whole premise is like since Chucky told Andy the truth because, you know, he was like, oh, it's probably some snot nosed kid. He's never even if he told anybody this, he, nobody's going to believe him anyway. Um, but the, the whole thing about his his voodoo curse that he's put on himself is that because he re- told the truth to Andy, Andy is the only person now he's slowly turning into a human, a again. human again. And so he's going to be ish. ish. He, he's he's vulnerable. He's he can mortal. Be killable. He's he's turning mortal. And so the body also starts to get fleshy. And so it becomes like doll gore as well with yeah. the Chucky doll where they start to like shoot yeah. him and he like bleeds and things you know it's it's all of this stuff so, so so why can't he die because I also have seen like that he like dies all the time so the thing is essentially that like his soul just sort of keeps on coming back into dolls and eventually actually it's funny that you mentioned this it's one of the weaker points for me of the franchise eventually you end up hitting a point where by the time that you get to uh cult of chucky um you have now had chucky learn the ability that he can essentially just like duplicate himself into multiple things (laughs) you know and so he's just sort of then like at the end of at the end of cult of chucky um it's not that he's gone and created like a literal cult of chucky in the sense of he's now sort of created mass followers um as like a a charles manson figure it's literally that he's gone and like imbued himself yeah directly (laughs) into multiple things so it's just a bunch of copies of chucky running around in in these good guy dolls is what they're called um and honestly i agree i think that it it, the the franchise really for me the franchise starts the franchise peaks at um at, at Bride four. of Chucky. Yeah, at Bride of Chucky. And then we start to do a slow, like, descent back down um, until we get to, until we get to, I get the new one. Which is a bit more of a comeback up, but it still doesn't, for me, I think, even get as good as, like, the first three. No, yeah. Um, I think that the, I think that, honestly, like, the, the franchise really, really builds. And I, the, honestly, even bringing in um, Tiffany, her, his, 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 former girlfriend that ends up also getting voodooed into a doll it's it's a whole thing but honestly like she's she's fun she's oh gosh who's what is the what is her name is, is, Jennifer, Tiff- is tiffany, Jennifer tilly tiffany bride of is that bride of chucky yeah. yes so um okay. that's fun see i have um these neighbors that live near me and they have chucky and uh tiffany uh okay. they, they they have them out on their porch 
and not not for Halloween. They're they're year round. Oh. <laughs> they're, like, they're, um, like, they're like hardcore about it. Um, but I, I see them like almost every day out on the porch there. Um, no, that definitely explains the type of people that your neighbors are. I think very thoroughly if they're the <laughs> kinds of people that have Tiffany and Chucky dolls out permanently. No, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I. I agree with your assessment. I think that it peaks. So like the first three, like I said, are pretty standard issue, eighties, nineties slasher sequel stuff. And then starting at Bride of Chucky, we transition into this very different world where we end off and then we pick up and we just kind of go, you know, like it's, it's not really a concern about how or why we just kind of go and the the building blocks almost on a certain level get a little bit looser at that point um you know chucky's resurrection his targets and some of the motivations and things like that get a little bit more um catch as catch can and also at a certain level honestly starting i think for me most of all with um curse of chucky i think they also just start to visually get hideous to look at <laughs> Like Curse yeah. of Chucky and Cult of Chucky are ugly movies. Well, I mean, honestly, like, we've got this box set right here. I'm staring at the posters of them all nice and lined up. Like, the posters of the last two films on this box set are just, like, gray and, like, dingy looking. And it's, like, you know, Chucky in red across it. But, like, the other movies were, like, very, like, bright and, like, colorful looking. You know, it, it's supposed to entice you because it's you, you think that it's supposed to be for children. Yeah. Whereas it just starts to just get like gloomy um further on um so like so you you mentioned earlier the uh, the the lgbtq plus reference and so that one that part really comes in in, in, seed. in seed of chucky where at the end of bride of chucky we have now had a a um i guess immaculate conception of some kind with these two doll bodies that have become human enough to produce a doll baby but like so this 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 baby ends up getting getting like you know uh, abandoned because at the end of bride of chucky both tiffany and chucky die as they always do at the end of these movies and get re resurrected mm -hmm. and so this child ends up getting put into the orphanage and has no idea you know who they are what's going on and the, the whole premise behind the it, it basically is that this child has has no assigned gender and so oh, okay and so when Chucky and Tiffany are reborn, they are now both imbuing the gender that they want this child to be upon upon them. And so it's this kind of like this decision of whether or not, you know, are you a boy? Are you a girl? Or are you neither? You know, and, and that's, these two that's parents the, trying to be like, but I want a boy, but I want a girl. That's what Seed of Chucky is about? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm yeah okay. and so okay. like what's really bold and fascinating i will say this yeah. again about like the later stuff even if if for me bride of chucky is is maybe my favorite of them or or my sake second favorite of them what i will say is that like they get progressively more fascinating in stretching this definition of what a slasher franchise can and can't do as it mm -hmm. continues to grow yeah. No, and I think that that's totally fair. Honestly, like I, I really enjoyed um, the Child's Play franchise more than I was really expecting to um, going into it. I thought that it was going to be, you know, just a, you know, a bunch of schlocky mess. You know, it's it's a it's a doll. He he stabs a whole bunch of people. You know, there's not going to be a, a no, like a connector through these through, through these films. But honestly, like the fact that they that they do really also stick really closely to the original people. It is always Brad Bird, and and you know we always have. Um, oh gosh, I keep forgetting her name. Um, Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly coming back to not only voice the the voice of Tiffany, but also as as sometimes as herself. Like she sometimes <laughs> okay. plays Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so it's, I think that it's just, it's a franchise that's having a lot of fun. And, and then we get to the new one. Yeah. So these are all, what's also worth noting is like the original, so the original Chucky films, the first three are all sort of studio driven efforts. And then once you start getting into Bride of Chucky moving onward, 
there are a lot of Don Mancini-led efforts, and by the time that you get to, like, Curse and Cult, they're Don Mancini directed, produced, written, and they're, like, straight-to-video films. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, like, the Chucky franchise started to, because of how weird it got, I think, partially lose some of its its mainstream appeal and luster. Um, And then, to your point, we then eventually arrive at... The new one. Which um... is... Which is Child's not him, play, right? and it is and not at all affiliated. Not yeah, yeah. What, what were your thoughts on the new one? Um, I liked it, and I didn't. Um, I liked the this the this new idea of how to bring you know the Chucky doll to life now this time officially without voodoo. <laughs> and oh, no. <laughs> and so it's like this 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 like very fancy doll that is that has like all of these um you know chips in it that is supposed to make it your your basically like your your alexa in your house but now it's a doll so like you can have it be like hey turn on the tv and it's got like an et glow light that like t- um affects everything in your new smart home that it it can it can wire into and and i and i and i enjoy that i think that that's fine um but i just i just don't i don't know i don't really like our main kid i don't like his 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 weird like group of 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 teenage friends that like you know eventually basically the the whole premise of the the doll is like this 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 factory worker gets upset at, at his job and turns off all of the the safety protocols on this one doll and this is the doll that becomes chucky and so the the whole premise of the doll, it's kind of like, I guess, I robot in the sense where it's like not supposed to hurt humanity, but this one is is woke. And so it it starts to to pick up on things and eventually becomes like this 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 evil creature that is out here trying to quote unquote protect Andy by by going out and and, and murdering all of these people and Okay. And and I just I don't know if this one is as creepy as the uh, as as the other ones purely like i think that this one to your point i think that the the new child's play film has a really interesting concept of how it creates its chucky i think it also does have a lot of nastiness that i really enjoy Mm -hmm. it can sometimes be a little bit um you know grisly uh and gruesome and mean-spirited um and i think it does have some interesting ideas going on in terms of like surveillance and all of this connectivity in your home you know Mm. but i don't think that it always carries that idea through to the end goal you know it's never um you know the simplicity of of you know if you were an idiot enough to put a smart controlled disposal you know in your sink uh and and then having this thing truly almost like a smart house Mm -hmm. you know kind of disney scenario i don't think that it takes it to that kind of interesting place it ultimately oftentimes boils down to chucky externally controlling a lot of other things other drones you know that sort of thing more so than where i think they really could have taken that idea in a lot of interesting ways which Um, is like it's all against you you know, yeah your whole like home this. is yeah. now like the slasher yeah. um and honestly like to your point i do i do like the nastiness in this movie and i think that the reason why for me it doesn't feel like a child's play movie is because like brad bird was the nastiness brad dwarf, you know? yeah brad dwarf oh my god <laughs> brad bird <laughs> i'm I tired <laughs> um if only. brad if dwarf only. You know, and Chucky was our like evil person. You know, he was this mass murderer in this in this body of a doll where he could basically get away with anything he wanted long as he played still long enough and he was having a blast doing it. You know, and it's a lot of fun. There's one scene in in Cult of Chucky that always makes me chuckle. It's like this this old woman who's got like schizophrenia and she's like, you know, batshit crazy. And he comes up and he's like walking in a doll and she just like, it's like, you know, thinks that he's like a figment of her imagination. And he's like having this argument with her about the fact that he is totally standing in front of her. And she's like, no, you're not. He goes, I'm going to do my thing first and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to kill you. And it's it's too good. It's it's so yeah. funny. And I, and I think that because like, 
you know, our, our Chucky doll in this one starts out, like, I feel like he's our innocent who is being turned evil by all of the, the, the things that are around him that are bad. You know, we've got this group of, of, of TikTok teenagers who are, who are doing stupid crap and, you know, just because it's funny that are, that are influencing him, you know, and I just, I don't, I don't know if that sticks as, as well. For you. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um, I see him just being like a little goblin. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I, he's funny. I love him. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think I think that's what also helps Chucky stand out from the crowd, not just like what he is, but because he is like the. I, I assume he's like kind of like a wisecracking, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. just like a like a funny asshole. Whereas yeah. so many yeah. slasher, so many slasher villains like don't even talk most of the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one of his iconic lines from the from the second one that they thought about making like the tagline for the second one but the studio wouldn't let them you know put it on the poster and they just made it a line in the movie was um don't fuck with the chuck uh <laughs> you know and so like they they do that sort of you know obvious stuff you know it's it's sometimes punny it's sometimes gross yeah. you know like um in the in the second one there's a guy who who the way that he dies is like doll eyes get like shoved into his head you know and so (laughs) it's all of this like weird you know funny also sort of sensibility to it no yeah and they always find Mm -hmm. some like horrifyingly gruesome way to top the last horrifyingly gruesome way that they got rid of chucky just for them to like figure out a different way to bring him back in the next one you know it's that's like any any clips i've seen of him dying is like him like screaming in agony every time (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. you know like (laughs) Like, being melted alive and crap it's great so well that's the other thing because like when other slasher villains get defeated like you know so many of them are just silent. They're just like, you know, down they go, whatever. Yeah. It's like, again, just from what I've seen, Chucky is literally just like, ah, oh, like, no fuck. And he never wants to die. You know, it's not like he's, he's actively motivated against, you know, every he never, time. he never like gets defeated, like with confidence. <laughs> like, I guess, like, he never, he never goes down with like, I'll get you next time. Yeah, you know, and and even the times that he does choose to, like, because there's even at least one instance in the franchise where, like, he dies doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And um, on a certain level, not exactly, but, you know, like, he makes a choice that that he feels is the right choice. No, yeah. And he ends up getting his ass kicked. You know, like it it doesn't go yeah. for him, you know. I mean, there's even there's even one point in the the franchise where he's like cuz the whole time he's like I I need to get a human body so that that way, you know, I can I can be alive again, you know, in real and and, and do human things. And then at one point he's like, why do, why would I why do I want to be human so bad? Like I get to be in this invincible doll body, you know, like I don't, I, who, who cares about being human? I'm just going to stay like this. <laughs> yeah, like... No, it's, 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 it's honestly like a, a really fun time. I, I think that you would really enjoy the, the Child's I need to Play watch them. Did franchise. you watch any of the series? No, we haven't seen the series yet. No, I've, I, I've heard the series is really, really good. That's what I hear. Um, and I hear that the new season um, is fantastic so far. Yeah. Yeah, I need a. That's the one I definitely. Oh, need to catch. um, their child is voiced by Billy Boyd. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and so it's like a little bit of a of a Lord of the Rings uh, alumni uh, fest there in in <laughs> Seed yes, of Chucky is. at least. Um, it, it makes it fun too because like he doesn't try not to be like British at all. Mm-hmm. That's fun. The kid is at least like mentioned in the show. I've seen a clip of the show oh okay okay, where i don't know if the kid is in it but the clip has chucky talking and like directly talking about this kid okay interesting Um, i'm excited to check (laughs) it out honestly we just haven't had the the time (laughs) yeah yeah i i I can watch like no tv i haven't i don't see shit as far as tv no yeah who has the Um, time besides besides bleach coming back holla to the bleach anime being back wow. in full swing, baby, after 10 years. Way back at it. It's so good. Everybody watch Bleach. <laughs> streaming, now on, streaming now on Hulu. 
in Disney oh, Plus wow. in the UK. If you had to rank the child's play films. Oh, uh, one other really great thing. Uh, the first, while well, you think of that, the first one is like him and his mom in an apartment. Then it goes to, you know, suburban child in a foster care system. And then it goes to, in the third one, Military Academy. You know, and I really enjoy, like, all of these, like, insane transitions of locations, you know, throughout. Yeah. Uh, it lends a nice texture, you yeah. know, because it's never go, too yeah. samey. Yeah. That's Honestly, nice. Honestly, like, for me, I think that the franchise, like, works really well. Um, I think that I am going to go, like, Child's Play, Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3 um bride of chucky seed of chucky but i think i am gonna slip the remake child's play mm -hmm. in before curse of chucky and cult of chucky i think that those movies are are just a mess okay are just are you know they're just not they're not interesting to look at that there's like so many times where they try to make the death more interesting by like putting it in slow-mo and you're like this movie was meant to be in 3d right like you you're like, oh, it's coming right at me like that's how it feels a lot <laughs> <laughs> and it's just uh it's it's, it's a slog Whoa. no Whoa. honestly <laughs> He's like, I don't care about these characters. Like, yep, and they're dead now, and we've moved on to the next person. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think that I'm going to go Child's Play 2. Okay. Bride of Chucky. Okay. Child's Play 1. Mm hmm Child's Play 3. Mm-hmm. Seed of Chucky, mm -hmm. Child's Play the remake, Cult of Chucky, and then Curse of Chucky. The second to last one for me was the hardest of them all. Um, that's the one that I liked the least. And I'm a hard sell on Insane Asylum Stories, which is the last one. But um, uh, that, uh, that fourth one was a real, or that, that, uh, that uh, sixth one was a real bear for me. I, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that's totally fair. Um, I see, I really, I guess, you know, looking at titles alone, I really thought that like Cult of Chucky, they were going to lead up to like having like all of the survivors of previous Chucky films, you know, come together in this insane asylum because everybody thinks they're nuts because they all keep saying that this doll did it. You know, I thought that that was going to be the whole thing. And no. Uh -huh. No, it's just a whole bunch of random people in an insane asylum and in one victim of Chucky that he comes back yeah, and, like, yeah, harasses. Lame. Yeah. And I was like, that was such a bummer. <laughs> it is weird. It, it is, it's so weird how often stuff will just fall into that, where, like, there's even, like, an easy, like you just stated, like, there's an easy, like, get out of, like, this being exactly the same. Like, we could do, we could set it here, have the usual setup, but then go this way. Yeah. But instead, like they just don't I'm like, but it's there. It's like right there for you. you yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, and like the shit gets gets a little old if you're just sitting on the you know nobody believes the the, the survivor that it really was a doll shtick. You know it. Yeah. No, and um, that you're one I crazy. think also. Yeah, Dolls yeah. that's can't also kill people when we start to get into like those decisions that they make that also like definitely start to lack any kind of narrative um sense at a certain point and we definitely start getting real fast and loose with certain decisions and and how certain things are happening um in a way that also just isn't quite as um satisfying because it, it doesn't feel as thought out mm -hmm. it just feels like choices being made truly for the sake of this is where the narrative had to go. No, yeah, I mean, they even bring back the original Andy and like one of the, it, 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 I think it is. It is the cult, original, yeah. Cult of Chucky, they bring back the original kid from the way, way back 19, like 80, whatever the hell, first one. Um, and and it's just, it's it's not even like a satisfying, interesting thing. They don't even do anything mm -hmm. funny with him like in in the the new Texas Chainsaw mm -hmm. 20, 2022, you yeah. know, where, where they just, yeah. you know, they make fun of it the entire time. No, no, we could have just skipped it. 
is how I feel. They um, he's in the show as well, the original kid. Oh, oh okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully <laughs> like I said, there's, there's more, a lot going more on. To do. There's a lot going on in that show. Um, I guess just because of the nature, you know, the nature of a series lets you do whatever. And I guess for mm-hmm. a creator like uh, Don Mancini. Don Mancini, yeah. Man Mancini. Mancini. I guess for like someone like him, that's like definitely like the better route to take would be a series yeah. format. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because he de- definitely has been doing, you know, essentially long form storytelling with Chucky for all these years. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. To wrap up our discussion, just real briefly, um, I know that we've we've already talked about quite a bit. Um, if uh, but I wanted to uh, to just talk real quickly about a triad of of sort of sci fi slashers, and this doesn't have to be you know an extensive conversation, but I think that they all still sort of fit into the mold: um, Alien, Terminator, and Predator. Um, yeah. These were films that for me, like I saw long before I really realized that I liked horror, Mm -hmm. you know, before I really knew what a slasher was. Um, And I was always a huge sci-fi fan. And so then sort of, you know, going back and and reevaluating genre conventions, which I think are like such a fascinating sort of chemistry and science. It was really interesting going back and and reevaluating these movies, you know, after years of, of watching all sorts of films, um, and really seeing that, like, some of the most, you know, incredible franchise, sci-fi franchises, you know, that people associate with the, the sci-fi genre started out really as, as a sort of horror franchise. Um, yeah. And I think it's interesting that the way that they chose to survive was essentially by, like, almost abandoning that premise entirely. Um, Nick, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, it's definitely those franchises were a little leaned a little more into horror, um, and then became more action, at, like a horror sci fi that turned into action sci fi. Um, I think the exception would be Predator, which starts out having the obvious action horror influence. Mm-hmm. Um, or just action. I said action horror again, but it's like uh, the action genre isn't obviously like there from the start. Um, Terminator as well, a little bit, but I think a little less so. Terminator, the original Terminator, is definitely feels like definitely feels like a slasher mm-hmm. more than anything else. Um, Terminator Two is obviously <laughs> just a huge action like extravaganza, um, but they they are really interesting in that they help. They are not slasher franchises because, like you said, they decided to just go elsewhere with it. Um, so it's interesting to go back and see their influence on horror and slasher genres, despite not exactly being them themselves. Um, just because they they go beyond it, um, and it do, does make you wonder if other slasher franchises could have done the same thing. And not yeah. not like it's too late. Because these things just won't ever die. No, never. <laughs> until until we all die, they won't die. <laughs> well, and um, well, I'll I'll let you talk, and then I'll I'll talk a little bit about Predator and, and that sort of thing. Before. <laughs> um, so I'm um, I guess you know I I I I've watched these movies years 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 before I ever watched a, a horror movie, um, because I grew up in a household that didn't that didn't watch horror but but we watched these but we watched these and so i think that it's it's really interesting you know after after going down this this whole rabbit hole with you know these these two slasher extravaganzas that we've now done and then going back to to these these movies and and truly doing realizing that they that they do have you know a lot of the same tropes and the you know the 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 setup and the build you know that that a slasher movie has as well you know predator you know we we start out with our with our group of marines and and one by one they start getting picked off by something that they don't know and and it's it's this mystery of of what's going on and then the fear of of not being you know fit to to take Mm -hmm. on this this force that's trying to take you guys down and what is the answer and you know constant going with our 
with our characters throughout this entire journey and then realizing you know with arnold what his saving grace is you know that's that's such a victory moment for you and it's that's that same kind of cathartic feeling that you get you know from your final girl at the end of of, of halloween with with jamie lee curtis you know and then it's, it's it's the same thing with with um with with alien you know mm-hmm. we've, we've we again we we set up with this with group of people now in, in a secluded area as well again it's always these like nice secluded places so that way we don't have to worry about more people coming into to our narrative than are necessary um and oh gosh alien used to it's still still i think is a it's much more effective because of also just the the setting as well of it um you know you're you're in this this ship where where things are you know chaos is ensuing and like if the ship goes down you guys you guys are all screwed Mm -hmm. you know whereas like there's nothing happening to the jungle well and there's always the the strange there's always the strange possibility that someone or something is going to show up in the city or the or the jungle Mm -hmm. you know in terminator or predator Mm -hmm. um there are people who you know feel very equipped their guns you know like Mm -hmm. there there are elements that give it that familiarity and also the terminator and the predator are there to kill you Mm -hmm. um with the alien the xenomorph um, it's there to hunt. It's also there to procreate. Um, you are completely isolated. They don't have any of the things that you would want or need. Mm-hmm. It is really. truly like a you have to hide to survive kind of thing. You know, if this was a video mm-hmm. game, this was a lot of like ducking under and behind things kind of game. And, you know, running when the coast is clear because like, you know, what, what are you going to do? You can't shoot it. It has acid for blood. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's also got sort of that body horror element as well mm-hmm. that some mm-hmm. of the others, you know, don't have to the same degree. Terminator hits at it. Some of the discomfort of, of body horror on occasion when it has things, you know, like, like uh, the Terminator digging around, you know, and jimmying out his eye. You know, and mm-hmm. and some of that Ripping dismantling of flesh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. Uh, with the Predator, yeah. And so um, it's it's also fascinating that, um, again, they have the, the slasher conventions, but I think, you know, again, a lot of people don't associate guns with the genre either. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Terminator, you know, it's just, it's truly whatever is there, whatever is available. He'll use his fist if he has to, you know, the first person that he kills, you know, he punches through him. And also yeah. like with the, with the Terminator, especially, you know, looking at our, our slashers, he is, he is the perfect archetype for it. He's, he's this big brute who is silent for the most part, you know, who is, who is unstoppable. Mm-hmm absolutely you know a wall of a person you know how do you stop that whereas like the predator and the alien you know the xenomorph they both can bleed but how do you take down something that is that is meant to not be stopped Mm -hmm. it's designed to not be killed yeah you know and and it is it's this 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 you know heart racing kind of experience you know what are our how are our you know people gonna survive this you know what would I do in this situation? Would I actually make it? Mm-hmm. You know, kind of, kind yeah. of thing. No, for sure. Um, I love all three of those films. I'm not going to try and rank on us any of those three because you know they're they're just sort of um, fantastic, you know, centerpieces. But I thought that it would be interesting to include them in this episode, especially given their. Um, their unique placement not only in in slashers but in sci-fi you know and Mm -hmm. in franchise filmmaking at large because again it's uh and what i was going to say about predator is what's really fascinating is that um predator that first one is absolutely a slasher horror thing and then some of the other ones dabble in some other stuff but with the most recent one prey we go back I think to that it you being... really go back to it being a little bit more of a plat proper slasher, a little bit more of a proper horror story. Um, Survival, and, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 
Uh, and I think that that's also part of what makes that movie so palpable and kind of, again, like Texas Chainsaw and some of the other slashers that really stand out across all slasher filmmaking. Um, Prey also, again, much like the first Predator, hits at very subtly some of those political ideas and fascinating uh, mm. timely concepts that also help ground it in the world that it's taking place in you know for the first predator movie this you know uh so this uh cia you know black ops move into central south america you know to to do some sort of destabilizing take out the rebels activity um with the new one prey you know this colonization effort you know the wiping out of indigenous people mm -hmm. the the fear of technology that is is going to doom us that we created or invited to ourselves you know um fascinating stuff no for sure honestly you know looking back it, it is really fascinating how much the the slasher genre can really um be whatever you want it to be you, these movies are definitely not considered horror movies by the standard you know constructs of that i don't think anybody has these movies in a horror section of mm -hmm. their home but i think that um you know when you really break them down the the genres aren't too too dissimilar you know you can lean more or less in either direction yeah well that's just about all that we have for you guys uh nick do you have anything that you would like to say to the listeners uh i've said it all i've said enough Okay. <laughs> Dear Hush, so. no honestly i think that i think that they've heard us talk enough today um okay. you know if you made it to happy the halloween. end good for you yeah, yeah happy halloween right. uh happy halloween to all you film buds out there uh of course this is this will be out friday so it's not halloween officially but have a good time uh eat candy responsibly and mm -hmm. uh you know have have a designated uh bucket holder if you're going to eat a lot of candy and and trick or treat that's, uh, that's right and uh yeah you know be safe out there watch some good horror stuff watch whatever horror stuff makes you comfortable horror is a wide umbrella yeah um or spice it up step into horror that intentionally makes you uncomfortable uh, and find out what's on the other side of darkness. Um, or just put on your favorite Halloween movie in general. You could you be could Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. It doesn't matter, guys. Have some fun, though. Um, thank you guys, as always, for listening. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Adios.